Pluto is just an amazing place. It has fired my imagination my entire professional career. What would it be like to be standing on the surface of Pluto? What do we know about it? It's got so many things to tell us about where the solar system came from, where we came from. The New Horizons probe is nearing its flyby of Pluto. It is the first probe from Earth to visit the dwarf planet. But what will New Horizons find? We don't really know, right? It's a, it's a, I think of it like a Christmas present that's wrapped in a box with a bow around it. We don't know what's inside. But what we do know is that we've never been to this kind of planet. We've never been to an ice dwarf. We've never been to a planet in a Kuiper belt. Scientists are targeting New Horizons to answer a few key questions. So there's two different scientific investigations that are near and dear to me. They're understanding the composition of the surface of Pluto. There's a lot of ices on the surface of Pluto and how those are distributed. I'm also interested in learning about the atmosphere of Pluto. These are things I've studied from the ground. Pluto's atmosphere has doubled in pressure from 1988 to 2002 and present, and it has to do with the sunlight on the ices. And so I want to understand this system, this complex system, you know, looking at all the details that we can learn. I'm interested in every single aspect of the mission. Every piece of data that comes down to speaks to the whole of Pluto and understanding it as a world. But I've got a couple of special items that I really want to know. The very first top of my list is how big is Pluto? We know very, very accurately how big its satellite is, but because there's an atmosphere around Pluto, those same techniques don't give us the same accuracy on the size of Pluto. And I think, ah, who cares exactly how big it is? But knowing the exact size of Pluto would change how scientists interpret what they see there whether light reflected by Pluto is coming from its upper or lower atmosphere. It's a very profound effect on understanding the surface. So, number one, how big is Pluto? Number two on my top list is how does the surface connect in terms of the geologic processes and the history that's recorded on the surface of Pluto? How does that connect with the light and dark patterns that I've mapped with the Hubble Space Telescope? We just don't have enough information without New Horizons to establish the geologic context of the data that we've collected here from the Earth. And it's figuring out that link is probably the, most, the thing that I'm most interested in learning. We've never been to a system uh, with a, com a complex set of satellites that was formed through the same process of a giant impact like the Earth Moon that can teach us about the formation of the Earth Moon system. In fact, even Pluto's atmosphere that's rapidly escaping um, turns out to be escaping through this, there's a fancy term for it, hydrodynamic escape. It's the way that the Earth lost its original hydrogen helium envelope. And nowhere else in the solar system, it's ironic, you have to go all the way to the end of the line, to the very frontier, three billion miles away, to find an example of a planetary atmosphere being lost through the process which shaped Earth's atmosphere. And so it has a lot potentially to teach us about that early evolution of the Earth's atmosphere and about the evolution of the Earth Moon system. And who knows? The dwarf planets dominate the population of the solar system. Who knows what they're like? We're going exploring. Space.com.